Hey guys, today we're going to do some simple projectile motion and um, uh, the problem we're going to try to solve today is if we have a ball and it gets launched at some velocity, we're going to call this velocity initial and we want to know how far it goes. Also, it's, uh, it's being launched at an angle. That angle is called theta. So, uh, we're going to start by splitting it up. So, we have our velocity here at some angle, theta, and we want to split it up into its horizontal and vertical parts. And we do that by using cosine and sine. So for the vertical, it's going to be velocity initial times sine of theta. And for the horizontal part, it's going to be velocity initial times cosine of theta. And um, the, 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 the projectile equations that we're going to need today are x is equal to 1 half acceleration times time squared plus velocity times time. So, and we're also going to use velocity is equal to acceleration times time plus velocity initial. And those are the only two equations that we're going to need. So, what happens here, you just think about it a little. Uh, it goes up, 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 and it, at the top, it, uh, it slows down and it has zero vertical velocity here. It's still going this way, left and right. Uh, that velocity doesn't change, but the vertical one does. And so we have to figure out how long it's in the air for before we can uh, figure out how far it goes. So I'm going to call this distance x. And in order to figure out how long it's in the air for, we're going to use the fact that it stops here. Um, so here it has a velocity equal to zero. So what we're going to do is use this equation here. And plug in that velocity, zero, is equal to the acceleration times time. Here, our acceleration is going to be gravity. So I'm just going to call it G for gravity, um, then our time, plus our velocity. So our initial velocity, since we're only solving for the up-down part, we're only going to need the up-down part of our velocity. So in this case, it's velocity initial times sine theta. And now we can solve for t. So we can subtract both sides by velocity initial. Oh, we should, yeah, I should mention that gravity is negative. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, so gravity is negative because uh, it's always accelerating downwards. Um, wait, so we're going to solve for t by subtracting both sides by vi sine theta, and then dividing both sides by negative g, and that gives you our time. These become positive because you divide two negatives, and so now we have our t. How long it's in here for? Um, don't forget to multiply this by 2, because that's how long it takes for it to go up. But we also have to remember that we need to go down too. 
And that takes us the amount of time. So you just multiply by two. And so now that we have t, we can just plug this in to this equation here. And I'm going to do that over here. Just going to go over this way. So plugging in for t, everywhere we see t, we're going to plug this in. So we get x is equal to 1 half. A, B, I, sine, theta, over G. Oh, I almost forgot the two. Plus. Sine theta. And so here for velocity, we're using a horizontal one. So instead of our up down, we're solving for the left right. So how far it goes left right um, here. So what we're going to do is put that in for our velocity, horizontal, and this for t, v i sine theta. Over g times 2. There we go. And so, conveniently for us, there's no acceleration um, left right. So, this is equal to 0. And so, this that means that this whole thing goes to 0. It goes that way. And so, x, how far it goes, ends up being just velocity initial times cosine theta times 2 times velocity initial sine theta over g. You can pretty this up and simplify it a little bit by saying velocity initial squared, combining these two, uh, putting the cosines and sines together. And I'm just going to put 2 over g over here. And that is how far it goes in general. That is the general solution. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Bye.